There's a hidden hormone balance disruption in your and your man's life. It's affecting your estrogen levels, your progesterone levels. It's lowering your man's testosterone levels. Let's nip this in the bud and get rid of plastic. Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to another one of my videos in which we are having a chat about how microplastics are affecting your hormone balance and your man's. Truthfully, I wrote about this already in 2016, but thankfully since then there has been a lot more awareness. That's why in this video we are revisiting the topic so that you can learn how plastics might be affecting your fertility, how I detox my patients homeopathically from plastics, and I'm giving you four quick fixes that you can start applying today so that you can eliminate plastics as much as possible and give your bodies a chance to restore hormone balance and your fertility. The biggest problem with plastics and fertility is that our bodies perceive plastics like bisphenol A as estrogen. That means that our body thinks that there is more estrogen in our body than there truly is and also more than there should be. And that affects our entire hormone balance. This means that for men, it will lower testosterone and lower testosterone affects the quality and the quantity of sperm. For women, it disrupts the hormone balance to the extent that there's often earlier ovulation with then an egg that is immature, so that is hard to merge and to turn into a healthy embryo to develop into a baby that the lining of the uterus is immature so that it's not capable of receiving an embryo and have healthy implantation, and also of a shorter luteal phase because of lower progesterone, meaning that you might not be able to hold on to a pregnancy. Estrogen dominance can even lead to a disruption that can give you hypothyroid symptoms. So your thyroid might actually be functioning properly, but the thyroid hormone gets eaten away by TBG, thyroid binding globulin, and as a result, you're experiencing hypothyroid symptoms such as fatigue, weight gain, feeling cold, feeling depressed, having a low libido, which is not helpful when you're trying to conceive, and irregular cycles. So you see, again, high levels of estrogen can have quite a big impact on your overall hormone balance. If you suspect that you're estrogen dominant but you aren't sure, I've got a video that explains what the symptoms are of estrogen dominance. And if you're also charting, you can also head on over to my chart interpretation course because there's an entire module that is dedicated to spotting estrogen dominant symptoms and low progesterone symptoms in your charts. There's another really big problem when it comes to microplastics and fertility, and that is that it messes with implantation. So even if everything happened that needs to be happening for a conception, it can fail at implantation just because of these plastics in our bodies. And that is also because it messes with our entire immune system. Now I realize that that all sounds really scary and we think, how can we get rid of these plastics? Well, I'll be giving you a couple of tips how you can reduce the amount of plastics flooding your system at the moment, but you're also going to want to get rid of the plastics that are already in your system and that you continue to get because we unfortunately can't eliminate absolutely everything. And the way to do it is with a homeopathic detox protocol. Now how I detox my patients homeopathically is too much to share in a couple of sentences in this video, but I have written DIY detox protocols in which I teach you exactly how you can do this detoxing homeopathically. Detoxing is something we homeopaths can tend to keep to ourselves, but I really believe that you are perfectly capable with the right instructions to learn how to detox yourself. And they teach you exactly what to look out for when you're detoxing, as well as providing you information of where you can get the homeopathic remedies to start in the first place. So if you're interested in detoxing the plastics homeopathically, head on over to the description down below. I've got a link right there. I find this detox especially helpful if you first cleared anything else that you might've been using um, synthetic hormone wise. So if you've had labor drugs or you've had contraceptives or you've had fertility drugs and steroids, if you first clear those and you are still noticing estrogen dominant symptoms, then this is the detox to go for or if you've never had steroids or you've never been on contraceptives but you're still experiencing estrogen dominant issues, then the plastics is most definitely the way to go. I've had some pretty cool breakthroughs with couples um, 
that we're having issues with sperm quality and quantity and the the woman had estrogen dominance symptoms but she was never on contraceptives and it was the plastic detox that gave them the breakthrough for them to conceive and have their babies so now let's get into the four simple suggestions for you to start applying to reduce the amount of plastics you're getting in your system the thing that you need to focus on is what you're ingesting your water and your food. The first thing to get rid of is the plastic containers in your home that you use to store food in. Now I haven't gotten rid of my plastic containers completely, they're just banned from the kitchen. We can put other things in there. No need to start adding to the piles of garbage when uh, there is use for the containers, right? But the point is that you don't store your food in there anymore and especially don't heat your food or your drinks in those containers because as soon as you heat it up that's when the plastic will leak into the food even more that brings me to the next step if you are purchasing warm drinks outside of your home and you're using the disposable cups that is better not to do either because yeah you might think it's a paper cup and you might have decided okay i won't put the plastic lid on so i won't be getting plastic guess what the inside of the cups are lined with plastic because otherwise it would leak through right away. <laughs> it would just, you know, melt in your hand. So this is something to absolutely eliminate as well. The next step is when you are purchasing foods and drinks that you ideally don't buy it in plastic containers. Again, this isn't something that is always possible or easy, but you can just reduce it as much as possible. And I know that some people in the world are not able to get any healthy water except for the bottled water. Do what you can. That's all we can do, right? Do the best. Now with all of the suggestions I just made to eliminate plastics as much as possible, I would recommend to not actually go gung-ho because it's very difficult to keep these things up if that's what you do. It's important to stick to tweaks. I think it is a manageable tweak to eliminate the plastics from your kitchen. I think that's a good start. And then maybe bring something along when you're out to have your coffees and your teas in. Trying to avoid buying foods and plastics is a lot harder, but you can get as far as you want to. Now, those of you that are type A and you do want to go gung-ho, <laughs> here's a bonus tip, your cosmetics. Because all of the cosmetics that you're using that are in plastic containers, you might think, oh, but I'm not heating it up. How do you think they closed it? Yeah, they heat it up just to make it vacuum sealable, you know, that kind of stuff. And then you're putting the creams and the oils and the makeup on your skin and your skin is absorbing it. Not to mention that a lot of our cosmetics contain microplastics. Yeah, again, scary, but we now know what to do about it, right? Hey, and if the detoxing is something that you're interested in, then make sure to click on the playlist in your screen right now because I've got more detoxing videos for example, on the synthetic hormones and the heavy metals. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye, lovely.